Friday. It is Friday. I'm ready, ain't y'all? Yes. Yeah. Cool looking hats. Those are new. They uh, had those at a district meeting and we decided to grab them up. And they look good. I'm supposed to have more coming in, so I don't know if they're they oversold, so they're sending out some to everybody instead of some to a few people. But uh, look great. I like them. I like that they integrated a bunch of different colors instead of just one color. New purple. New pliers. purple plier set. Yep. Ever these plier sets never last. They're always really good priced. Uh, and for the amount of pri uh, pliers you get, because uh, I don't know if you've ever priced like a set of just these two, right? Or these two, but it's like somebody fell and bumped their head. So when <laughs> when you get these two plus all of this, a long needle nose as well. I think these actually usually come in a set together by themselves. Um, they're they're quite expensive. So to get them all in one plus a bag. It usually works out really well. Yeah. Well, dude, these hats are awesome. Yeah, I like them. Uh -oh, the the blue one looks really good. Oh, is it I'm, there I'm, go. go ahead and put that up there. I'm gonna have to take that. That looks great. Yeah, so that's that's what I think everybody loves about you because you're you're like these things are crazy expensive, but when you buy them this way, you're gonna save a lot of money. well. I, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I tell people all the time that I buy on sale, that way I can pass the sale on. So right. um, anybody that looks at some of the prices on the tool truck and don't go, whoo, that's high, mm -hmm. you're lying to yourself. Absolutely. Some some yeah. of the stuff is high. Now, am I saying that they're not, some of the stuff's not worth it? Definitely not. But I also look for value buys too. Uh, that way we can uh, help people out and uh, make it a little easier. Make the tool truck fun when it comes around. Right. So you got definitely two bright boxes on here with the orange or the green and the, the yellow. Yeah. I honestly figured that yellow one would have been sold by now. It, it there's like been a couple color. people that have tried. I um, like that a lot. Well, one person tried and then another one is kind of debating if now's the right time or if he wants to wait till after Christmas. Yeah. Um, that could make a difference too. And I can yeah. understand. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard to make a big purchase for yourself right before Christmas when you got a bunch of other stuff going on. But Absolutely. Before we get into the tools, what do you think about them Rebels? <laughs> I, you know, I told myself before that game um, that I wasn't going to get mad. I wasn't going to get yeah. aggravated that you know, it, it was kind of upsetting that we were not going to have Trey Harris again. Uh, you know, that's not mad at him. Obviously, right, right. his health matters. Sure. I'm not saying that. But, you know, it, we're going into the biggest game of the year. We weren't going to have our best receiver. But it gave me some hope with what we did there in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. When a guy can score five touchdowns, you're like, maybe yeah. maybe he's <laughs> right there. Yeah. Um, well, they showed out, man. Their defense did great. Like, I was really, really proud to be able to Oh, I was. Um, no, I wasn't too happy. And I was kind of worried the first drive. I was too. With the interception, I'm like, here we go. Well, I saw him get up limping. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, oh, no. Yeah. He's limping. You know, as a quarterback, your uh -huh. feet are the most important thing. You got to be able to plant. I'm like, this could be bad. Plus, he runs too. So yeah. it's like, this could be bad. And then the very next play, he throws that interception. And it wasn't an interception of like, okay, he missed a read. No, it was. He tried yeah. to plant that foot. It didn't go right. It sailed high on him. Mm -hmm. It just happened. But I'm going to tell you what. For a third-string quarterback to come in, yeah. have really one questionable pass where you're like, oh, that was tipped, and mm -hmm. we just luckily called it, uh, and then drive down the field like he did, that gives you some hope of oh, what yeah. the backups are. I'm I'm proud of the boys. Say that. I, I am so. too. I'm kind of sick of, of hearing that Georgia's not the team they normally are, so they didn't really do nothing. I don't care who you are. And if you've ever been a fan of Ole Miss, you know mm -hmm. that we find a way to lose the games we're supposed to win. Absolutely. So to go in and win a game that we were supposed to lose, 
and I haven't looked a whole lot into it, but they say that we have actually uh, only been behind a total of six minutes this mm -hmm. year, and the two games we lost were both on fourth down plays. The two games we lost could have been won if we would have not done stupid crap like go for it on fourth and long and kick a field goal. Yep. Both games, Kentucky and LSU, would have won those games if we would just kick a yeah. damn field goal. <laughs> so. Well, I will say during the Georgia game, yeah. that was, and I was impressed by that. It Me was, too. if there was, there was one time that I thought, I know you're not fishing to go for this. I did too. I was cussing like crazy, and then they called a timeout, and brought the kicking team on. I was like, whoo. Yeah. And I know Dart, I, I could see him throwing a fit on the oh, sidelines. Yeah. I know he wants. To go for it every time, but that's something that if the momentum swings at that point, mm -hmm. there's no stopping it. And you just kept waiting for Georgia to turn it on. Look what they did against Alabama. Well, I'm I'm like old Saban on this one, you know, and I'm not an Alabama fan by any means, you know that. But he's going to take them points. Yeah. If you if you got it there, go ahead and take it. And yeah, we got to be happy about it. Yeah. I mean, we can be mad we got a field goal. Yeah. As long as we're happy, we won the game. And, <laughs> you know, against Kentucky, what made it even worse is it was like a fourth and 15, fourth and 20. And well, they were, went for it on the play before, the drive before that, remember? And yeah. they got it. And then yeah. they got to fourth down again. It was like fourth and eight. I'm like, just kick the field goal. Because yeah. there was at like 28-yard line or something. We was at that game. It was very heartbreaking. Yep. Yeah. And then the LSU game, that was just. You know, we went down there for that game. <sighs> Yeah, that was, you know. And we watched the kicker before the game warming up, and he was kicking 60 yarders. Oh, yeah, good. So I'm like, why, why are we not kicking this ball? Well, that's, why are we yeah, not kicking this that's ball? my thing. I, I watch some of the warm ups, and he's kicking it from the, the midfield, and you're mm -hmm. like, why are we going for it on fourth and down from the 40 if he's kicking easily? Yeah. Now, I get if we're way off to the side mm -hmm. and, and it's like, okay, we're on the hash mark. He can't good do that. That's what, But if we're dead in the middle or if it's Let third and eight, kick that ball. whatever yeah. we do, try to get to the middle yeah. so we can kick that ball. But It's easy to run east and west. Yeah. North and south where it gets that's, tough. That's like, it. Just move the ball to the center, kick call your field. timeout, take three points. Yeah. But it is what it is. <laughs> all right, guys. Sorry about that, but I was just proud of our little football team. That's here, it. I've been wanting to talk about that all week. We're not used to being able to ride a wave like we're on right now. We're not. <laughs> so, because I remember as a young kid <coughs> growing up, I was an Ole Miss fan, and I remember when our high school team could beat Ole Miss. Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously. Well, so. and, and just to be honest, if, I mean, Mississippi State's having one of those years. Yep. Uh, and, and it's nothing against Mississippi State. It's just – it seems like the state of Mississippi gets caught in that carousel with coaches. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of down years. Revolving doors. Um, yeah. But either way, back to tools, I guess. I'm worried about the state game because I don't know if you've ever seen the history of it. Watch that pattern. When Ole Miss got a good team, state beats them. When state's got a good team, Ole Miss beats them. We always have, find a way to screw ourselves. We do. Um, We're good at that. That's <laughs> that's just it, you know. And that's what I was worried about with uh, Florida. I know Florida's not that great this year. They're on their third string quarterback. But they're still Florida. They're still Florida. We always find a way to wreck each other's season. Mm -hmm. And I think they well, said Ole Miss waste. did it when Tebow was yeah. there. Like I was there at that game, and that was yeah, I was miraculous. there. But yeah, I think they said uh, Lagway may be back this week. And they're gonna play LSU this week. That that's gonna be a game to watch because yeah. if they play LSU a good game, Ole Miss better not have the big head at all. Mm -hmm. They better yeah. bring their A game. That's right. So, well, boys, we love football <laughs> down here in Mississippi. I don't know if y'all noticed that or not, but we so do. we got two new items this week along with the new hats. So three new items. But tool related, we got new sockets, which some of you have already seen these sockets. I got them kind of late, um, but they are a new swivel socket. They are 3H drive currently. They are making the half inch drive. Okay. Um, so the big thing with these are that they do have a pin in them, but as you can see, the pin is actually well, welded down, in yeah. and, and grounded down. Um, the reason that we are making these sockets is if you have our pinless swivels right now, 
and you use that 15 like everybody does on exhaust and everything else you know after a while it becomes sloppy to where mm. this has no control at all right uh, it's steadily falling over um they don't necessarily break all the time but they do get really loose and then when they do start to break usually it's the pin that's popping out right so when Mako looked at that they have determined that our impacts have steadily gotten stronger and stronger and stronger mm -hmm. and they was not designed for that torque level right so when they went to the drawing board they come up with um these Another thing with our other sockets is during COVID, they got almost impossible to get. Oh, yeah. um, and one of the reasons that they were almost impossible to get was even though they were made in the USA, the, the blank, the material that was used to make them over here um, come from somewhere else. And it was really hard to get your hands on. Then we had a quality issue when we could get them they were breaking a lot more often. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they kind of rushed these along. They've been working on these for a year. They do have them in the short and the deep. This is the short. Does have the pin, but it actually still has the same movement as the pinless. That was a big thing that guys wanted with the pinless was to right. still have that movement. They are saying that these are made to be able to withstand the higher torque. Okay. with that welded pin in there um, these are also made in the usa um i don't know really how much i'm supposed to say about them but uh, they did say that the people that make our ratchets for us mm -hmm. are the ones that's making these for us okay um and i think everybody knows that's aj mm -hmm. um so they've always did us really good on our ratchets they're going to do us really good on these the markings look great on those. Right, yep. So they're they're calling these the torque force, mainly because of that, well, like I told you. Right. Um, they're, off, they're making them to do the higher torque. They have a 30 degree pivot angle. So that would be that, you know, 360 access at that angle. Mm -hmm. Well, and, they look really good. Yeah. Um, I am going to read off the computer a little bit so I don't mess that up, but it does say that they also reduce the size of the the body. The body. Yeah, you can tell that's a lot smaller than than the old one. Yeah, they that was one thing that they wanted. They wanted that smaller. Normally with our ADV pin sockets, it has that collar on it. Sure. Um, but with this laser welded pin and everything, it really opened it up for us to be able to do more. Um, now they are, uh, the last I heard, if these do what we want them to do, if they have, if they hold up the way that we want them to hold up, we are going to phase the other ones out, mm -hmm. uh, and go to these, uh, mainly because those are not, like I said, when we had to start getting our blanks somewhere else and stuff, it, the quality kind of dropped and, and that's not what you want. You right. don't want to be known for your quality dropping. So this is how we done it. Plus we, we really like our team uh partnership with aj they do us really great so uh that helps for me uh knowing that they're still made in the usa sure and they still are really high quality so i've already sold the deep set or i would show you all that one as well uh, those are really really nice right they're there. they're really nice and and it gives me an option to be able to push not just the aj or not just the adv or the swivel right now i have these as well uh, and they are going to last longer um, is what I'm excited about. Because mm -hmm. the 15s, they get, you know, there's nothing more aggravating than to put that on an extension and go to put it on the exhaust and it falls. And, it fall. and it's yeah. like, Argh. and you're trying to get it in there, it's tight. Sure. So I, I think you got that part number. Um, like when we, um, when we was doing all those clutch jobs, you know, we wore a 16 out. Yeah. And, and it was the same way, like, man, you would get up there and you'd almost be, because you'd have to use that 36-inch extension, you know, the right. half-inch drive with the three-eighths on the other end. You'd almost, you'd snake it up through all the crap that you had to get through, airlines and everything, and about the time you was fixing to put it on the head of the bolt, that damn thing would drop down. That's it. So. So we've talked a lot about scanners. Yep. Uh, since I've become a distributor. Um, 
the number one thing with scanners is they're so freaking expensive. Mm -hmm. We kind of touched on that in the um, beginning of the video. I do believe our scanners are worth every penny that they are. But as an up and coming tech, or maybe not even as a tech, but in a quick lube or service advisor position, or maybe just as a regular tech that just real quick, they want to know what the code is. We're not going sure. to do heavy diagnosis. They always want something cheap and quick, right? Mm -hmm. We've come out with this scanner. Uh, well, we've partnered with them on this scanner and I'm really excited about it. Price point wise, I'm gonna tell you what it lists for online and then we'll go into what all it does. It lists online for 224. Okay, so that puts you down there with like pretty much the Napa yeah. store type scan tools or code readers. So a while back, MDAC said, hey, there's a bunch of scanners showing up in shops from Napa, mm -hmm. Harbor Freight, even Amazon because they're so cheap. We're not looking for one to do everything. We're not looking for one that can do the major doc. We just want something that they can plug in, read the code, tell the customer, do you want us to go further? No. Or maybe it's just a gas cap. Maybe you sure. go in there and it's just a gas cap, clear the code. Maybe you're working on it. And I have seen quick loops, unplug the mass airflow, take the box, the cover off, mm -hmm. put the filter in, forget to plug it up, try to crank it. Now we got a now code, got a code right. and now we got to take it to the back shop get the technician or if it ain't a dealership we gotta get the big scanner sure. blah 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 this one's really quick really simple um it's also going to be powered by repair solutions too um so it is going to have an app on your phone as well uh, i'm going to try it out this weekend and really see how that works out you know what would be another good thing for that because i know if you work in a shop Everybody always wants you, hey man, can you tell me what's wrong with my car? Yep. And you gotta drive back to where you work, you know, and get your scan tool. And not everybody owns a scan tool. It may be a shop scan tool. So that would be a good option for a guy to have. Cause man, when you learn how to work on shit, everybody's your buddy. Yes, everybody. <laughs> like if you want to have a lot of friends, buy a trailer, yep. have a car lift on a scan tool. Yep. Learn how to work on stuff. Well, and you're, I, you're everybody's buddy at that point. And a lot of a lot of times as well, what places have started seeing is because scanners have got so high, we've started charging a diagnosis mm -hmm. fee, right? So people have started going to AutoZone, O'Reilly's, the place that scan them for free. Yep. And you think, well, that's not a bad idea. It is a bad idea. And the reason it's a bad idea, and no shame to anybody, mm -hmm. because I don't, I've not met you. But the worst thing that can happen is for them to go to AutoZone, get it read for free, and then that guy behind the counter, his job is to sell See parts. Your part, right. And the problem with that is whatever that piece of paper says, that's what they think it mm -hmm. is. So they bring it to you. They with may the have part. bought they may have bought the part, sure. they may not have bought the part. But then in their head, they're one hundred percent right. And mm -hmm. if you tell them any different, you're trying to cheat them. Yeah. The problem with that, we've all and sometimes it's hundred percent right. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's telling you to replace an O2 sensor when you have a leak uh, in your intake sure. uh, gasket or something like mm -hmm. that. We need to diagnose further than just look. There's no magical computer that's going to mm -hmm. tell us everything. This one ain't either. And that's one of the things about this scanner is if uh, on the phone app, it's actually going to tell you the most likely fix to it. Now, it says most likely because it doesn't mean it's 100% going to be sure. there. But it is going to help with At that too. At least it's going to put you in a general vicinity. Right. So it is. it does have the verified fix solutions on there. It does have predicted repairs. It does have upcoming maintenance. It even has TSBs and recalls. That's something else. Sure. If your buddy brings a vehicle to you, you scan it, especially, okay, we'll go with Tundra because I know mm -hmm. Tundras. For a while, they had a recall on their pumps and valves, mm -hmm. or it was a TSB, one of the two. Well, you would get a lot of people that would take their vehicles to these shops and spend thousands of dollars it fixed for free, for, free, for sure. secondary air. So that helps as well. 
It so is. is that a subscription based thing that you have to pay for or when you buy the scan tool all of that's there until i am uh gonna check further i believe it's all because it says it's powered by them i'm pretty sure let's just read here for just i think it because all comes with it you don't have to pay a subscription for that that's worth a lot like a ton of money to have that uh I will get back on that. Okay. Um, like I said, I just got this in last night, uh, and I don't want to tell you wrong. Sure. So, but I do, I do. I'm going to read a bunch of stuff on it. But we're just going to go through some of the stuff that it. Uh, what well, thing don't weigh nothing? Does it, it does not weigh anything. Holy cow! I was shocked when I picked that up. So it says it does check engines, read and clear, which is, we know that. It says it reads and clears OEM engine and transmission, has code pro, uh, priority, severity, and definition. It does emissions and smog check readiness, trip cycles for completing the smog and emission checks, battery and charging system test. It does have live data. That's one of the things mm -hmm. about these smaller, cheaper scanners. If it don't have Most live data, don't have it, right. then it's kind of hard. We have to go get the big scanner. Uh, it does support all 10 OBD2 models. It does service checks, oil maintenance and reset, ABS brake codes, read and clear, SRS and airbag codes, read and clear. That's something else that some scanners drop off. They don't mm -hmm. read and clear airbag codes. Now, obviously, if it requires the module to be reprogrammed, like some of your Chevrolets after two sure. times, it has to be reprogrammed. It's not going to do that. But uh, BMS and battery reset. If you've ever worked on these off the wall cars, uh, I can't remember the exact car that I've done, but they simply changed the battery and then immediately after they changed the battery, it went into a transport mode to where you couldn't reset that. Was it a Mercedes? Uh, no, this was a foreign car. I, f I forget what it was. But anyways, our big scanner went in and took it out of that. Mm -hmm. It says this one to do that as well. Uh, Does that one release the parking brakes so you can do your own brakes? Uh, I'll, I'll read up on that and see. It says it does hybrid battery cell voltage, uh, and it does do TPMS relearn. So That's there's a really lot. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot packed into this little bitty uh, scanner for sure. And I wish I I wish well, I, could I can find... tell you at that price, you better order some more of them because. That should sell so extremely they, well. Yeah, they automatically sent me this one for the new product. And it says that on that repair solutions, it says seamlessly repair with diagnostic tool to deliver the most complete automotive repair database with verified fixes from ASE master technicians. So that is pretty cool there. No subscription required. Wow. Yeah, so there it is. Damn it, boy. That is amazing. Get free reports and verified fixes repair solutions to no scription required. Well, there you go, guys. So that question was answered just by reading a little bit. And there's your part number right there. Yep. M-D-C-R-A-D-V. So that's pretty awesome there. Yes, sir, it is. Um, that's something that a lot of people automatically charge for because they're like, well, you know, no free advice, right? Yeah. So that is pretty cool. When we asked for that, uh, I don't think none of us... Everybody should own one of them if you work on cars because that way you can tee buddies and I'm everybody going else one. is going to ask you about it, right? Yeah, I, I'm going to own one strictly because, like you said... Or what's what's even better is you got those buddies let me borrow your scan tool yeah and they don't realize how much it like, costs let me borrow your scan tool where i can work on my car <coughs> you know? and they don't realize that that snap-on scanner you paid eleven thousand dollars right for. yeah <laughs> i know that's cheap insurance here take this one it'll do everything you need to do it does do the misfire data on the live data i know that's something i always try sure. to look for because you get mm -hmm. live data but it, it gives you like your mass airflow, but then it don't give you your misfire data. Right. That's something that aggravates the far out of me, but it does do screenshots as well. So that's a cool it, little scan tool. Yeah. Man. And freeze frame is, is underrated. Uh, you talk freeze frame to a lot of people and they're like, oh, I never even look at that. Well, you're looking at the code and you're trying to mm -hmm. diagnose and you don't know what it, and it, it don't always do freeze frame, but it's nice to know because when you click on freeze frame and it tells you, 
hey, the vehicle was going this fast right. or the temperature of the coolant was this. So mm -hmm. I know, okay, well, the vehicle's warmed up. Worked on one just this weekend that when it warmed up, it would die. It was like cutting the key off and would not wow. start back. That would have been nice to know that, mm -hmm. okay, when the coolant hits this, so I would know it's not on a cold start. But, guys, that's a cool scanner. I'm going to play is. with it some more. It's very cool. If I find anything that, that maybe I didn't mention on there. Uh, I like the no subscription part. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Because uh, I think companies have started kind of like, to me, it's kind of like holding you hostage, right? Yep. So you pay all this money for a tool, and then when the subscription runs out... They pretty much brick your tool. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of some bullshit, in my opinion. Like, if you pay for it, you should be able to have at least what you paid for from now on. I yeah. can see not getting anything new or maybe right. not getting, like, the diagnostic help, you know, yeah. through the, the software. But there's a lot of scan tool companies that it turns your scanner into a code reader pretty much at that point. And yeah. that's some bull crap. Yeah, I don't like that. And something else that I don't like... Uh, I've never been a fan of losing anything. I've already paid for it. Yep. I don't need I to agree. lose it. Um, something that has developed in the last couple of months, and if you work on cars and you have an aftermarket scanner, it will affect you eventually, is NHTSA has come out. Uh, as far as I know, that was the main company. Uh, and they have decided due to car thefts that in order to do all keys lost, you're soon going to have to have a license with that and sure. uh the manufacturers of the scanners are going to be blocked um for from letting you get around that now mm -hmm. you'll be able to program one key if they still have a key right. um you know dodge kind of does it where you got to have a code or a pin number mm -hmm. um but they're going to make it to where it's almost like a locksmith's license but it's not necessarily a locksmith's license because you can own it and own this license right. too um and not everybody's going to going to get it i mean sure. you, it's like five hundred dollars to apply for it or to get it, and then you got to have so much insurance, and mm -hmm. you got to pretty much say that you're the only one using it, and it, it's it's just gonna make. It seems like everything happening right now is making it more difficult for the average tech. Like they mm -hmm. want it to where I guess because car sales are down, they got to get more work to the dealerships somehow. Um, but it's really unfair to ninety percent of the customers that I sell to. It's just somebody that's just trying to make a living yeah you know, and we're none of us is driving up to memphis programming keys for them guys sure. i mean that's just not sure. what we're doing so we've already had the gateway thing and mm -hmm. if you haven't felt it yet nissan's announced they're going with a gateway uh ford's just gonna go with a gateway toyota is rumored to be just gonna go to the gateway and all of them charge their own fee so it's like 50 dollars per manufacturer Wow. Scan tool has to be in date. I don't understand that. That's just another, which, you know, people say, well, you're the tool guy. You should be happy about that. I'm not happy about that. Yeah, I mean, I, at it, the end of the day, if a guy has to update his scan tool, he's not buying tools off your truck. Well, there's I mean, that, there's that, and there's the ongoing cost of a scan sure. tool, right? So that's what turns most people away from our big scanner is, okay, mm -hmm. I got to pay $7,000 for the scanner, six seven yeah, eight $1, whatever hundred dollars a year to yeah fifteen hundred dollars a year that and that's what's got us charging mm -hmm. the diagnostic fee which is causing people to go elsewhere yeah. uh, which this is going to help with a lot of that because we're going to be able to scan real quick this is your code do you want it diagnosed okay let me hook the big scanner to it sure er, you know everybody thinks we can just hook the computer to it anyway mm -hmm. but you know it's just one of my rants i guess but hey, it is what it's it all is. valid <laughs> it's all valid <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hopefully y'all enjoyed today's video. We got to see some cool products and a super cool scan tool. Like always, thanks for hanging out with us on this Friday. Y'all watch Jake Paul get his butt whooped tonight by Tyson. <laughs> Hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise. Cool tools and discount goes down here. If you're not subscribed, take your finger, click that button. Have a great weekend. See ya.